Sunshine family. Oh wow, it's been a while. This is uh, this is an interesting couple of weeks for me. I hope all of you are safe and that you are unaffected by all of the crazy disastrous events that are going on around the world. Uh, I feel like I've been struggling to keep up with uh, just the current events of what's going on between Hurricane Ophelia heading towards Ireland, um, Puerto Rico in the aftermath, Florida in the aftermath, Houston in the aftermath. Uh, I haven't even checked out if Hurricane, what was it, Nate uh, made landfall in Louisiana. I'm not informed on that yet. We've got wildfires breaking out everywhere in California. Um, I'd like to point out this particular YouTube channel here, Kafka Winston World. Uh, she does a pretty consistent job of talking about the very hard observations and ideas that we need to talk about. And, you know, she even shares just how affecting this is on her psyche and her consciousness and I wanted to thank her for her words around all of that because a good chunk of that the the psychological effect of all of this news plays into uh, just where I've been and it's I, I feel like it takes an interesting path and 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 reaches some interesting depths when I consider uh, everything that's going on uh, with these California fires, with all the weather modification and the weather disasters that are happening around the world. And now it looks like they're uh, going to have mass evacuations for volcanoes. Uh, I know that a good chunk of Bali has already been evacuated because of uh, fears of, uh, uh, what volcano is that? A gung? Uh, I'm not sure how to pronounce that. Uh, so we've just, our world is off the hook right now, and it's not just isolated to one geographic area, although a good chunk of it is going on in the United States. And, oh, uh, yeah, let's just throw uh, Las Vegas, Nevada in on the pile. Uh it, I don't know how these truth channels are continuing to, uh, to run in real time and, and gosh, get all this information out. I'm so thankful for them. Um, especially the observations around the fire. Uh, this is a, a fantastic video here. This is evidence of military grade electromagnetic frequency accelerants used in Sonoma and Napa fires. This is the truth channel that is now in truth by grace. And we're seeing a lot of the same observations that we saw in the World Trade Center attacks. A lot of the same types of uh, <laughs> absence of rubble. Um, in this video, let's see if I can get a uh, just randomly pick a spot here where this is so interesting guys this tree is burning from the inside out uh, I mean you, you all need to check this video out uh, evidence of military grade EMF accelerants uh, I I'm, I'm seeing so many new observations that are ripe for acknowledgement that fly in the face of the official story that we've been given. And when you've got automobile glass as well, let's see if we can find a picture of melted automobile glass. So right here, you need t about 2,600 degrees to melt glass. This, this does not come from a wildfire. Uh, 
And Truth by Grace does a pretty good job of showing how wildfires will peak at 900. And then the temperature, even though the fire continues to burn, will be lower than, than 900. And we just don't get temperatures hot enough to melt steel, melt or bend steel, melt aluminum. I want to try and find another, another little snapshot that's in this video here. Oh, there, there you go. There's the one of the melted glass. And this car is totally torched. Uh, to happen from a wildfire, I, I don't, that doesn't fit with my experience. Uh, when I was working as a cop, I went to more than my fair share of automobile fires. Uh, to pour some kind of liquid accelerant inside the passenger compartment of a car and to light it on fire in uh, a very low populated industrial area maybe is a very typical way that stolen vehicles get disposed of. And that's the only time that, that I ever see a car that is just totally gutted like this melted windows that that was when they basically turned the car itself into a forge a furnace and accelerants were used now what's going on with all of these cars all of this rubble all of the different properties that have just been decimated she's got some great overhead shots of it um that might be a different video for the overhead shots, but things are going on in California that shouldn't be going on. She's really breaking down when these fires broke out, where they've been breaking out, and they are not moving like a wildfire moves. This appears to be the continuation or another instance of the same kind of technology that was used to bring down the World Trade Centers is being used to decimate these areas in Napa County and around Santa Rosa. And I've been struggling with watching all of this stuff unfold because of my suspects, my suspicions, my suspected, uh, the ties I suspect my father of having with the with this shadow government, this runaway power structure that appears to have been turned upon the same people that have supported it and have paid for it all. And, and I'm really struggling with it. I got an email about a week and a half ago from my father. I haven't heard from my mother in a while. I'm usually in regular contact with her. Um, and it's interesting, the timing of events of how all of this unfolds. And I was asking a lot of questions on phone calls and in emails to my mother about if my father had ever disclosed any of the agreements that he's made with the government. And if we were ever, we being myself and my mother, uh, named in the agreement as... Uh, having any consequences against us should my father break the agreement. We've never had any conversations that way. And it appears that just by pointing out the observations like his resume online, his above top secret security clearance, his above Q security clearance, researching what those are and just what an elite... Uh, small group of people that puts him with. Uh, we're talking all past and former presidents of the United States, uh, active four and five star military generals. Uh, we're, we're talking, we're talking the, the hidden power structure here, guys. And to get an email from him, basically wanting me to acknowledge that, uh, him and my mom are getting older and they're having uh, just the normal troubles of aging and sent some articles uh, about oh, the different struggles that people have with aging and just saying this is, this is the way I see your mom's experience. 
And then in the next sentence he would say, but your mother doesn't think that this article is an accurate description. And, and this is the way my family communication has always been. He, he, made, he made comments in there that fly 180 degrees counter to my understanding of my mother's perception. And my mother's not responding to me now, even when I send her just happy emails, just pictures of me out doing things in the now. And I want to make sure that she's got everything that she needs. I know that she struggles to get around. She uses uh, a cane for assistance. And in my father's email, it says that she's using two now and refusing to use a walker. Um, there's just been so much gaslighting that I can pick out in my family. And I want to give you an example of one of those. Um, I found my dad's photograph in a book about NASA that was written by Richard C. Hoagland. Let's, uh, let's pop up an Amazon window and find this book so that you all know what I'm talking about. But this book was published in 2007 and Richard C. Hoagland had made some observations of NASA footage, NASA media that, that didn't appear right, that kind of flew in the face of the official narrative, discrepancies among different slides. And I first saw this book, so it looks like it, 2009 was when it was first published. I thought there was a 2007. This might be a different edition. But I saw it for the first time in the public library, my local library, and it was on the, the new bookshelf for all the new additions to their collection. And it had a really interesting cover here, and it was brand new. I was going to be the first person uh, in the community to look at that particular copy from the library, and I checked it out. And on page 253, which I don't, I don't have it handy here to show you right now, but I'll make another video about it because it's important. It's just related to, into everything that I'm processing in my life right now. So his picture's on page 253. He's standing right next to Richard C. Hoagland. And uh, this is apparently uh, uh, at... I don't know, maybe it's at Goddard Flight Center or uh, another related agency uh, location for the space program. And Richard Hoagland is informing and showing NASA officials, government officials, the discrepancies that he's picked out. And in the picture that, that is captioned with that information... Richard C. Hoagland is standing at a table with some large photographs that are spread out, and my father is leaning over, looking at one of them. He's standing right next to Richard C. Hoagland. And when I saw that picture, I immediately talked to my mom and told her, hey, I found a picture of Dad in a book on NASA. How interesting is that? And told her what the title of the book was. It was The Dark Mission. Secret History of NASA by Richard C. Hoagland. Told her to look at page 258. And she came back with, wow, your dad's in a book about NASA. That's pretty interesting. And when she questioned my father about it, he denied it. He says, nope, that's not me. It's somebody that looks similar to me, but that's not me. And... My mother and I talked back and forth amongst ourselves, and we're convinced that that's my father. And then an interesting thing happened. I, I pretty much let it drop because I hadn't read the book. Uh, I, 
I didn't, I, I didn't know about all these facets of deception. I was just starting to be on my conscious truth-seeking journey. And so it was some years later that I learned of the Freemasonry connection in with all these different facets that were being deceived on. And interestingly enough, in chapter five of this book, the very chapter that follows the picture of my dad, they talk about the secret history of NASA uh, or the occult history of NASA and its connections to Freemasonry. And I suspect that my father put about two to three weeks of vehemently denying that that was his photograph. Uh, he put energy into it for that long. And we're just saying, no, we, that looks like you. And, and he was really, he was going over the top uh, denying it. And, and I think I know why now. Because uh, I don't think Richard C. Hoagland's a great source of quote-unquote truth, but he does play a role in at least waking some people up and getting people to question the official reality that we've been handed. And that's really all his book is about. I don't agree with a lot of his conclusions. Uh, he still thinks the moon is an is a actual physical ball of rock that's... Uh, orbiting around the earth and I don't I find that hard to believe I don't I don't have another perception to put in place for it right now but I know that I've been deceived about the moon I know that NASA is one of the biggest liars that I have uncovered personally and it just really takes me to an interesting place in my consciousness to examine my father's willful ignorance around acknowledging any of this, having no knowledge about any details that might be in the security agreements he signed. I have no idea if those agreements uh, list consequences to me or my mother or anybody else. But I don't feel that I was given any kind of informed consent or an ability to agree or say no to any of it. And it puts me in a place where I have no idea if I can ever trust anything that comes out of my father's mouth. This email was so... It was so confusing. It seemed like he's asking for help with grocery shopping and lifting things around the house. There's 3,000 miles of distance in between us. I know that they're financially sound. They could easily hire somebody to help out with some day-to-day -day tasks. My father seems to think that it's my mother's pride that's getting in the way of making that type of decision. But ultimately, underneath everything, what I sense in the email is that your mother does not agree with my perceptions, but I'm trying to solicit your complicity to work with me to modify the environment around your mother against her will. And I don't like that feeling. Uh, this is the way the communication in my family has always been with secrets, with uh, just elephants in the living room, topics that we are just not going to talk about. And when I talk about them, well, it, it feels like I get isolated. And when I ask questions and don't get responses, well, it makes me wonder just what type of relationship, what quality of relationship I can have with my own parents. I've always felt that my mother and I got along great and that if my father was just not part of our immediate environment, things were always great. And 
it was in early grade school, maybe about third grade, when I really started having a strong dislike of my father. Uh, and that was about the time that I noticed that all of the pattern behavior, tools, advice, guidance, idiosyncrasies that I picked up from him were not working and were really not proper in the world. But I kept watching my father have so much success with all of that. And he kept getting decorated and awarded by the military and promoted all through DARPA and up through Ed Air Force headquarters. What an insane mind prison for me to finally pull my head out of. And one of the biggest helps that I've had along my journey for pulling my head out of the deception has been Crow 777. Now Crow 777's having an interesting time with censorship. Uh, he did an interview with Richie from Boston that was posted this morning and it was immediately taken down. Uh, I got up in the morning and I saw it there and I immediately downloaded it and backed it up. But in the time that it took me to take a shower while it was downloading and then come back to my YouTube and hit play, I try to play it through YouTube it was taken down. And so Richie from Boston, he's got it back up. It's just got a still picture now. It, it did have some video in with it. But I've had some correspondence back and forth with Crow 777. And he says that it's voice recognition that is picking up his voice. And because it's not coming out on his channel, it's being censored uh, for unlawful use of copyrighted material. And it seems that the same outfit that runs the ads for his own private site, uh, crow777radio.com, uh, was the listed complainant for the copyright violation uh, on YouTube. So uh, Crow and Richie are, are digging through all the garbage that they have to dig through in order to sort that out. Um, but we're seeing an awful lot of YouTube channels that are being censored, being given strikes and taken down. We watched the Truth Channel. We've seen Victorious Libertas uh, get a few strikes. And a lot of people are heading on over to BitChute. This appears to be the next emerging uh, video hosting platform. And it's using BitTorrent technology to host the videos. Now I've started a lunacy channel on BitChute. This will be my backup channel and eventually it's going to be my primary channel because I have a feeling that uh, YouTube's just not going to be worth anybody's effort uh, before too long as far as trying to figure out what the truth is. If you haven't already, please go over to BitChute and you're going to find that there's a lot of truth channels that are popping up on BitChute. Uh, Victorious Libertas is now on BitChute. Uh, the Honeybee, who does a lot of Pizzagate type investigations and is working on a, a documentary, um, she's out there. Uh, Carolyn Lameco, she is also a Pizzagate researcher. You can find such high quality people who are still uh, putting out truth or just having to do it through different venues. So it appears that, that BitChute seems to be the one that is uh, going to fill the need for the truth seeking uh, disseminators out there. There's also a video on Victorious Libertas channel where they have an interview with the creator of BitChute. And if you have some extra time, that might be an interesting one. It's with Honeybee, Carolyn Lameco, Victorious Libertas, and then the BitChute guy. I don't remember what his name is. I'm sorry for that. Wow, what else do we have to talk about? Huh. Yeah, the weather. Um, 
Let's head over to the weather window. It's been it's been a struggle for me to keep up with all the the day to day uh, weather events. Uh, I've really switched my focus into just self care. Uh, this has been uh, been a pretty big impact on my consciousness, on my psyche to watch everything unfold around the world. Uh, apparently, we've got. Uh, here's Ventu Sky. This is Oph- Hurricane Ophelia, I believe. Yeah, Hurricane Ophelia is supposed to make landfall in Ireland. Hey, I've got a subscriber in I- Ireland, David. He sends me uh, email regularly. Seems like a, a very high vibrational guy and, and is just full of peace and love. And wow, we got... Uh, We've got Hurricane Ophelia that's supposed to go up and hit Ireland. So, hey, David, buddy, uh, I don't know if you're staying in Ireland for this event, if if you've got the opportunity to get out. Um, But if you do stay in Ireland and you want to keep me posted through my email of your boots on the ground observations there as this weather event moves in, uh, I'd be happy to serve as a liaison and and help people get some real-time uh, data from Ireland as that unfolds. I also got an email from a person claiming to be a retired police lieutenant. And this person uh, had some very interesting comments. I want to first say that I, I love getting emails from uh, retired cops, active cops, uh, people who obviously have been part of the system, who are awake to the corruption and observant of these observations that fly in the face of the story that we've been given. And I don't, I don't have any more information to give out about this person. So I just want to say thank you to him or her uh, for, for writing and giving me their comments about uh, Hat J and Randy's case. Um, This person has gone through the UCC filings and uh, is encouraging me to uh, read through those. And I'll probably just read through them live uh, while I make a video about each one. Uh, The the general gist of this email is that uh, these documents blow the lid off of this case. And so... It's really interesting that when we switch over, let me switch back over to, hmm, I guess it is this window. On the IUV website, here we go. The United States of America has responded to the defendant's motion that's Uh, Randall and Heather's motion to dismiss the case. Uh, BZ's got a a few comments. But we've got, uh, I think it's an eight-page document, a six-page document to read through. And uh, it'll be really interesting to to just see what, what this chess move is all about. And... I have a feeling that this document here, this response, is going to factor right into those UCC filings that that Heather has filed and that Randy has filed. So we've got that coming up soon. Uh, I've got I'm going to start reading through the UCC list. Um, most of all, I just wanted to say thank you all so much for continuing to send me emails and love and light and links, even though I haven't been making videos. Uh, I've really been huh, doing a lot of reflecting, trying to figure out who I am in the moment, in real time, uh, relative to my family and relative to all these horrific experiences that are unfolding all over the world now. Oh, wow. (sighs) 
thank you so much. It's it's been it's helped more than I could have ever imagined that it would help. So please keep them coming in and keep yourself safe if you are you know, I used to work not too far away from the areas that that are torched in California and Northern California. And if you have any pictures that you took yourself of any of the destroyed houses in that area, destroyed structures, um, if you've got any testimony, anything like that, uh, I'd love to hear from you. Um, These observations are very important because the only way that we can author a perception that's going to be healthy for us is to define what all these observations are for ourselves. The way the power structure can hide things in plain sight is to misdefine all of these observations that they cannot stop us from making. So they show us pictures from California and say, oh, this is wildfire, and then we just see destruction. But wow, there are pictures on in Truth by Grace's channel and coverage of this of, of metal that obviously liquefied, ran out of the car, and re-solidified on the pavement. That does not happen in a wildfire, guys. Wow. All right, I think this is a good place to, to close out the family meeting here. Um, you know, uh, the other thing that I would encourage all of you to do is work on your relationships locally, your friend groups, your social structure, and especially anybody that you have in your personal area who is receptive and open-minded enough to talk about uh, a lot of these things that we talk about on my channel that are going on out in the world, if they've got an open mind to talk about that, that's that would be to me the person who I would work on a relationship with now. So if the shit hits the fan near where you're at, you've already got somebody that you're clicked up with that has a similar perception. I That's that's one of the most valuable things. So have plenty of food and water on hand. Hold the vibration of love and get out and connect with the people in your area. And just to give you guys a lot of hope, I've been blown away that by merely having the courage just to open my mouth and talk about the things that I talk about with you on my channel, to talk about them in groups that I find myself in, in real life, in my locale, people have been receptive to it and I've gotten quite a bit of support and understanding and acknowledgement. So I wanna, I wanna thank all those people because I know that I couldn't walk this journey without you. This has been a crazy, insane journey to pull my head out of the deception and then to realize my family's connection to the ongoing deception and the unfolding disasters that are going on today. So I'm going to keep plugging at it. You'll be back really soon uh, with some UCC documents and then reading through this uh, latest response to the motion to dismiss. And we'll continue from there. Uh, Yeah, thanks so much for the email, the love, the light, and the links. Keep them coming, and we'll be back real soon. Peace. Bye-bye.